Hello, my name is Dr. Michal Brown. I'm a psycho-oncologist working at the Hadassah Medical Center, Sharet Institute of Oncology in Jerusalem. Usually, breast cancer is being diagnosed. The median age is around 60. However, there is some patients that are being diagnosed under 40s. Those patients are also parents to young children or adolescents. And we will try today to discuss some of those uh, challenges and those tensions, and maybe even to think about some of the um, guidelines or things that can help parents to cope better or to communicate better with their own children. So I'm happy to be here today and to be joined by Liron and by Amanda. I'm Amanda Celeste, and I was diagnosed originally with stage, um, stage two breast cancer back when I was 32 in 2014. And then in 2018, I had a recurrence to my bones. Um, definitely did not know that it could come back. Um, so it's definitely um, made me become more of an advocate in so many different ways. I have three amazing children, three crazy dogs, and a huge support system with my husband and friends. But uh, Liron is also with us, and Liron, you are uh, actually bringing to this discussion another point of view. Hi, um, and nice to join you as well, Amanda. Um, so my name is Liron Paluch. I'm an Australian veterinarian living in New York City, um, and I am the. Uh, my mother was. Uh, diagnosed with breast cancer when I was 11 years old um, and then diagnosed with a recurrence in um, while I was in high school um, and then progressed on to an advanced metastatic disease uh, in my late teens. Can you, can you tell us maybe, Amanda, how old are your children today? Absolutely. Um, Bray, or, sorry, my oldest son is 13. My crazy middle daughter is 12. And the spunky one that's been, I guess, told that is like me, I don't know if it's a compliment or not, is uh, eight years old. It's been quite of a learning curve, but we have really been blessed with the fact where we are open and raw with our children. Just um, that back and forth communication has been so, so important, so key, not just for my husband and I, but definitely for our children as well. You know, they need that sense of security, um, especially with the older ones being older and having access to the internet. Um, we want them to be able to come with us with any questions or concerns that they have. Hey, Liron, do you remember some kind of talk or a discussion that uh, you remember with your mom? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I was thinking about this the other day and I very, very distinctly remember the first conversation when she was first diagnosed. I, I realize I can't remember the conversation I had with her when after the recurrence, but when her cancer had um, returned and was now considered metastatic. I don't remember that conversation, but the other conversations I, I do remember um, my, my mom had a way of telling us very sad news with a sprinkling of humor, uh, because that was, that was her style. She told us this really sad news and then she, then she made, you know, that she would make a joke about it and we'd all kind of laugh. Um, all three of my children are completely different. And I don't know if it's the former teacher in me, but they all have very different love languages. My oldest, um, he does not like to verbally discuss uncomfortable topics. He doesn't even, I guess now he's a teenager, he doesn't even like to verbally discuss comfortable topics. However, what we have worked on throughout this is he likes to write. Um, he is a journaler, so any questions that he has always had for me, he jots it down in a journal. And it's just kind of like a back and forth um, little book that we keep. So, you know, it, it doesn't have a specific spot. It just, if it shows up on my bed, I'm like, okay, all right and respond back to him that way. Give it back to him, and then when he's ready to open up or he's ready to have some sort of dialogue, it's, it's there. As you know, first of all, I think this uh, little book you're writing together is, is amazing because it's a shared, shared creation, right? You're doing something together, and it's also, it has something uh, incredible because it can go back to what you're writing and read it again and again and again when he's ready for that. And it's, a, it's, it's just beautiful. Many times parents have the tendency to try to protect their children. And in order to protect them, they're trying to exclude them from what's happening. 
The result of that is too, is feeling again loneliness because they do feel, kids know, kids know, they have like a very sensitive way to gather information. And today with the internet, they are getting even more and more information, not accurate many times, and they are staying alone with it. And the other thing is they might feel very, very helplessness. And in order to help them to feel more and uh, more capable to cope and less lonely, uh, ex- including, including them in the process of the coping experience is very, very important. So thank you for those two remarks. I think it's uh, very important. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Braun, what information or what advice do you have for parents um, to have that initial conversation with their children regarding a diagnosis? I think, first of all, to understand it's not a single conversation. It's many, many, many talks. There is, a, I think it is very, very important to say the truth, but not hold the truth every time or all the time. So don't lie, because what is very, very important that the kids will have a secure base that they know that they can rely on their parents and that they have a place that um, that they will get they will get their honest answer. If they will not feel that, they will look for answers somewhere else, and we don't have control of what they are learning. I think the other the other thing is to be very simple and to be aware of what kids in this developmental stage can understand. So. Um, children in elementary school, many times in the um, like more small kids will be very interested in very, very um, egocentric point of view. Who will take me from school? Am I, are we are going to go to our family vacation in the summer? Are there, are, how the, this illness going to affect me? Are you going, going to come with, uh, to school without hair? Do I feel comfortable with that? You need to be ready in those discussions to very difficult question that many times you are avoiding yourself. So kids can ask their parent, their mom, are you going to die? It is a legitimate question. And you need to find a way to answer this question without lying, but with uh, giving them hope. And there are also professionals as myself that can help I feel like my dad, my mom, they had uh, they had resources available to them. Uh, the palliative care teams that they worked with at the hospitals were amazing, and they you know really good at um, providing counselling. But I also think that what's different um, between now and when I was growing up was that there was and, and there still is stigma attached to mental health, of course. But then um, there was way more stigma than there is now, um, and then. Um, it wasn't until, you know, my late teens that my, my doctor, like our, our general practitioner said to me, uh, my sister was asking for a referral to a psychologist. And then he turned to me and said, Liron, what about you? And I said, what about me? And I got really defensive and he said, well, do you want to see somebody? And I said, why? And he said, well, can I be really blunt with you? And I said, yeah. He said, your mom's dying. And I said, I know that. I'm fine. And I left the room and I got to the car and started crying, but I never, I refused to see somebody. And it wasn't until, you know, the last few years that I started going to therapy. So I really wish that, um, I hope that for, for kids nowadays, that's more normalized. Cause I think it would have helped. You know, I think that uh, this, uh, this video or d- our discussion is maybe part of trying to minimize this gap. I think it's still there, but we are trying to have more um, resources for families, I think, to think about the family as our intervention unit and not just the the person itself. So uh, maybe we are trying, three of us, to do something here that uh, trying to minimize that and to give uh, voice to those uh, children and to those mothers. So maybe it's... um, good place to say uh, thank you very, very much uh, for the opportunity. And thank you, Amanda and uh, Liron for uh, joining us. And um, we hope for the good and uh, lots of uh, health 
and thank you very much.